All right, I got a special guest today, a super special interview with a good buddy of mine, Mr. Justin Vom Eigen. Dude, you get bigger every time I see you, man. Man, you're just trying to you're, you're trying to blow my ego. That's what you're trying to get bigger. Not, not well, my, dude, not my physique. <laughs> if if that doesn't do it, the rest of the interview will. Okay, because we put out for those who don't know, we put out a telesales champ contest, right? So some, so everybody was able to actually make sales over the phone, then submit their audio recordings for a chance to win. For those who don't know, like that didn't participate, come on now, thousand dollars cash interview with me right now tickets to eight percent nation we had a bunch of people a ton of agents submit recordings and jve top the cake one first place dude what do you think about that man i didn't believe it i thought i thought you when you sent it to me i was like all right well what was i the only one who submitted an, in, an entry <laughs> no no that's, that's what i thought and i uh um, I, I i said my girlfriend was sitting next to me i was like babe i'm like I guess I won the contest with Cody Askins and, and she was like, I'm not surprised. And I, I was like, I am now. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of people, you know, and, um, yeah, it, you know, there's a lot of people doing it now. And what I thought was uh, the, one the, my first thought was how can I help other people like learn the same, learn the same thing? You know, exactly. That's, that's what I wanted to do. It's like, how can I bring this to my team and, and help yeah. them and help them grow and, and, and grow in their process. Well, and, and that's exactly why I'm excited to have you on because there's no doubt a lot of people can learn from you. A lot of people are trying to transition at being really freaking good at this thing, dude. And, and you are a master of it, whether you believe it or not. And, and you can probably still get better, but you are a master of the phone. Um, he, Justin is a, is a team builder and a senior consultant with SLS Senior Life Services. I'm a big fan of the company um, and love you guys and, and good friends with a lot of you, which I love. Um, how, how were you always this good at phone sales? No, I I got um, I wasn't. It, it's it was like a, uh, a it was almost a necessity though to learn quickly because of where kind of like my journey through the in, insurance world. Um, I got really good at just marketing online, and then and and I was like I have all these leads to answer, and I didn't think it made sense to just drive to people's houses because in South Florida everybody is forty minutes away, right? It's not like you're in a small town or a town where it's like 15, 20 minutes. Everybody's 40 minutes away and at like half my appointments would cancel. So I'm like, all right, this is like, I got to fix this. And then I just started doing it over the phone and um, it's a, it's different, but if you apply the, if you're successful in the field and you apply the same work ethic to over the phone, you know, it's, it, it's not like someone can be successful out in field sales and then, and then be horrible at telesales. And vice versa. I mean, if you can crush it in telesales, you can crush it in field sales too. It, it says it's more about the individual than necessarily like, than than necessarily like what the what the what you're doing. You know, it's like, hey, I'm gonna yeah. get this done and I'm gonna make it happen. Oh, I'm gonna make it happen either way, right? Like, like I have my yes. numbers to hit, my targets to hit, and um, and I know that I'm gonna I'm gonna get it done for myself, and and do what I have to do. So that's 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 really what it what it came down to, and it was it was mental. I'm just trying to get my light up here. you're good man no, it's mindset man you know it's mindset and and, and you've got yeah. it um you've clearly got it because when you go into sales no excuses only results count That's yeah okay what we say at SLS. yeah what well, was well, so, okay so say that again what, what what's the hat stand for no excuses only results count boom right. no, no excuse, that, that's a mindset shift you know it and 92 yeah, percent yeah. of interest agents fail and more at telesales because that it, it, it really they go into it with the wrong mindset you know um where where did you where did you get this kind of work ethic? Where did that come from? Because it's 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 strong. Like I see it on Instagram stories like all day, every day. Like you are a freaking hustler. I try, man. First, um, I just goes this is like weighing on my mind. I'm sorry guys for wearing a t shirt. I'm I'm like super insecure about it. I had to fly to see my father, so I'm I wasn't I wasn't just for just to impress here. But I um I where the work ethic came from, I guess I don't know. I, I um I I always was like a really overachiever in school and everything, and then I got um I had like a really, really rough part of my life. And then I got to the point where it's like, I'm going to sacrifice everything to get everything. And I, um, and I really got it from selling cars because you would be at the car dealership for 12 hours a day, six days a week. Like I, like people who are in the car sales industry would like, they kill it in insurance because the average insurance agent that I see come in now is like, 
I want to work from home in my pajamas 20 hours a week and you know, <laughs> be rich, you know, not the average, but a lot of people come in with that mindset, you know, because sometimes they're sold these stories where they can just like, there's nothing sexy about grinding out an insurance policy. You know, no. there's nothing sexy about selling about grinding out a final expense policy over the phone. There's not, but you can make it that you can make it sexy, you know, by with yes. your personality and the, and the way that, that you bring it to the table. And, and I learned that in selling cars, it was like, there's nothing sexy about selling a Mazda, you know, no. but, <laughs> but, but you can, you can bring your swag to the table, right. Yeah. And, and, and make it happen for, for yourself. And that, that every day, 12 hours a day, six days a week, where it was like, you know, no life ever. And then you get into insurance. You're like, wow, I can, you mean I can like have a girlfriend and enjoy myself and do well. It was like that, that work ethic just kind of transitioned over. And also the biggest thing is that like, you have to enjoy, you have to make it fun. Like the people in insurance who have the best, the happiest people in insurance work the most from my experience. Yeah. Like, the, like the people who go in and don't really do much. And what I mean is not just showing up at the office for 10 hours, like actually yeah. like grinding out, whether it's training your agents or making sales calls or, 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 or recruiting calls or whatever it is. Right. Like the people who are happiest are the ones that are working the hardest. And, and that's yeah. just transitioned to me. Cause for me, productivity is the basis for morale. Mm. Like my production dictates my happiness. Right. So when I'm and I have to have the activity to produce, so it's not even like, oh, I work hard. It's no, I, I have goals and I have these results that I need to achieve. For me, it's not even working hard. It's just I want to win and I'm going to do what it takes to win. And then and then that's the bottom line. How did you get so competitive? Oh, man, I don't know. Maybe because I graduated high school, I was like 5'4", 140 pounds. And <laughs> I don't know. Wow. I, I really don't. Yeah, I was super, I was super, I was really short, really skinny when I graduated high school. I don't know. I just, I've always had that competitive nature. Um, I, I don't know. I just like, wait, that's a good question. I, I don't know where that came from, man. I yeah. Just, it's just seeing, just wanting to, want to succeed, you know? That's, no that's doubt. Really what it came, came well, down to. I don't know. One thing that I love about you and that you see a lot of successful people embody and is, is the energy and enthusiasm that this business takes and that especially phone sales takes because you're oh, not, man. you're not sitting with them. Dude, you have to. It's it's like it's you got to hit them off the bat with like they they have to be like what kind of medication is this guy on? You know, like yeah. that's that's what you want people to be to be thinking. And the thing is, you have to take you cannot take anything anyone says personally. You have to literally yeah. roll with every punch, and you have to be you have to. The thing is, is you're a professional, and how can you possibly consider yourself a professional if you can't? confidently react to whatever your client will say to you on the phone, whatever the lead will say to you. And you really can't consider yourself a professional until you're at that point where you're, they're like, I don't care what they say to me because when, especially in the greeting, this is where a lot of agents get thrown off Good. in the greeting because you have to hit them with that energy enthusiasm and enthusiasm right from the beginning in the greeting. So when you come in with that, if you are, if you and you use the right like fluctuation in your tones and tonality, if you come in with that, that energy like that, it gets people to just kind of want to listen to you because people will pay for a good experience, right? So if you can give someone that yes. good experience right away on the phone, then they, then they'll just stick with you. And as opposed to just being monotone, like they want to hang up the first four words out of your mouth. You know, they're just they just got nothing to do, and they got you know prices right as on for the last ten hours. So they're they're talking to you, you know. So when you hit them with that, it gets them to stay. And that was a big game changer for me when I, when I learned that that's what it was and I was able to kind of improve on that. And then also too, what the biggest thing for agents and getting people on the phone and getting through that is the, um, is not taking whatever they say as, as a, as a, as an opposition in the greeting. I don't, I hate saying objection in the greeting because that's not an objection. No, it's a, it's a reaction. It's a reflex. Like think of a really pretty girl, who you'd go up to out in public and like you say, Hey, what's up? And it's like, boom, like that wall throws up, you know, unless you're as good looking as Cody Askins and then, you know, yeah, right. but it's, <laughs> but it's, um, but like they, you know, it's like, okay, at one point in their life, that person was mistreated by someone. So now this wall goes up because what happened, think about it like this. Okay. When you call someone, they don't know who you are. They have no idea who you are. 
And then you start talking about the reason for my call is that you recently requested some information about a product, right? They know why you're calling. You're not there to educate them. Like, don't use that line. I'm just calling to tell you what's up. No, they know that's BS, you know? Yes. You see right through that. So have no, but have no shame in selling a product, by the way, anybody. But the, anything that they, like what happens is a red, a, 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 an alarm goes off in their brain and it says perceived threat in my environment. Like my environment is being threatened right now mm. because of a past experience, right? So they may not know you. They may not trust you. Maybe they got ripped off. Maybe they've, they're like, hey, if I spend a long time with this person and I feel obligated to buy, maybe they have trouble saying no. Maybe they, um, maybe they, they for whatever, whatever it is, right? Maybe they, they don't want to waste your time. They're like, oh, I'm going to wait. Maybe they don't think they can qualify. Maybe they don't think they can afford it. Whatever they say in the beginning, you can't take it at face value. You mm -hmm. have to just, uh -huh, oh, awesome. And then right through, right? With the energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. Like, I already have courage. Oh, Miss Jones, that's amazing. I'd be surprised if you didn't. Most people who I speak with find this information very valuable. And then just like right back or, oh, I love working with proactive people. And then right back in the script. That's now, crazy. if they say it three or four times and hang up, okay, cool. Hang up, call them back another day. I promise you call them in three days. They're not going to remember you call. You know? and, and if they do, then, then good. You got a reason to call. You know, you're building that relationship with them and they show you follow up, right? So, when, when, they, when they hit you with that in the beginning, you have to handle it with energy, enthusiasm, and excitement. And I feel like I get most of my sales in the first few minutes of the call. Like I know I have a very good idea is if this person is going to let me bring them through a presentation and if, or if I'm going to, if I'm going to walk them through the presentation, not that let them let me bring them to the presentation. Yeah. And, and then, and then, and then in the rapport building, it, it builds up that. into, you know, learning about them and their, and everything about their life. Um, but yeah, that's, it's it, biggest thing I, I, when you're in the greeting guys, you, you have to be, you have to hit them with that energy. If your attitude is not right, if you're in your own head, go outside for a walk, go walk around, look at stuff in your environment, get out of your own head and go back because you have to be on point. Don't take anything people say seriously. Right. And that's strong. That's like main, main take main tip there for the, for the greeting for sure. That's huge. And, and I, I do, I, I'm with you. Uh, the, 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 those first few minutes, you really can tell a lot. And I love that you're focused on, I love the, I love the reflex. I always call it like initial resistance, right? I love the reflex. I love that. I love that. Um, people pay for a good experience. That's huge. Um, attitudes, attitudes big. You feel like you know that you're going to make a sell typically within the first several minutes, which is amazing to hear. Um, and I do believe that's a couple of the big pieces people struggle with is, you know, getting control early in the call, having good energy and actually continuing when they do hear a fake objection because it's not even a real yeah. objection. Like, I love that. Yeah, exactly. And, and one thing I want to say, too, is that um, it, especially, uh, the biggest one, I think, is when someone says they have coverage. They, I already have coverage. And a lot of agents just jump into the immediate replacement pitch, you know? Mm. And at that point, I don't feel like, and I know some people will argue against this, but I promise that at the 100 times people try, they may get one or two replacements and then think it works. But... I've had in the last couple months, just by hopping on calls that I've helped other agents with, we found people who have said right in the greeting they already had coverage. Them already having coverage was, oh, actually, I got the letter in the mail from Globe Life, but I never did anything with it. Uh, or, or the agent came by to see me, but we never applied. That was six months ago. That's, I already took care of it, wow. right? So I, imagine this, like you're in the greeting and someone says, I have coverage. You're like, what do you pay? How much a month? What, how much coverage is it? Who, what is it a whole life? Who's it through? And then they don't have it. So then now they're like, wow, I'm going to sound like an idiot if I don't know all this stuff. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to run away. Yep. Okay. So I, I ask all this. If they tell me I have coverage in the greeting, I wait until after I ask the health question and build the report because I haven't earned the right to ask them about that. And if mm. they don't really actually have it, then they're going to feel insecure. I have to make that friend I feel before I ask them about what they have for coverage. And I, I don't really care if they have coverage or not at the end of the day. I mean, one in a million people will have the hundred thousand dollar whole life their parents bought them when they were four years old. You know, yeah. So. What, what's, what's the size of your, uh, I know your team and production has grown a lot. Yep. Um, how, how, how big is your team and how much production do y'all do every week? Oh, wow. Well, with the virus, it's varied. So with everything, because the, with, we, with telesales, we like when everybody's in the room together, together the, the production is significantly higher. Yeah. Uh, cause there's the affinity, right? Like we, we get each other going, you feed off each other's energy. 
And that's the one thing a remote team can't have is like just that feeling of you can't replace that human to human interaction. No. Um, and right now I have about 20, 20 people, little about 20, 22 people on my team. And we're, um, but the, the, with people being at home and stuff, there's a, a lot of people who have been inactive. And also too, it, at the end of the, it's not, it's not necessarily their fault because, you know, people go from, from having kids in school and having spouses at home sure. to like, okay, yeah, well, or paying, you know, having babysitters to like, okay, well now we're, you know, my husband's laid off or my wife's laid off and now we have three kids at home in school on the computer. So it really limits it. So our production is, is about mid thirties. It has been about mid average mid thirties, but before the virus, we were over 40 consistent. We hit 50 once or twice, 50,000 and the team was smaller. But what I've learned is it's, it's a recruiting thing. Like you just have, that's going to happen for anybody out there building teams. You, you, you can't ever rest in your laurels on who you have because you're going to get amazing people. And this is just the reality. This is just, this is exactly how it works. You're going to get amazing people who are going to fade out and you're going to get, you're going to get underperformers who turn into overachievers mm. and you're going to get overachievers who are just like, you know, they think the grass is greener on the other side and now they know everything so they can do something else and go somewhere else, which, Hey, I, I what I think is if someone works with me, I want them to, if they do leave, I want them to be like, this is the, that was the best person I've ever worked with in my life. That's, 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 awesome. that's what I want to have. Like yeah, that person taught me so much that I can really go anywhere and do anything. Um, our production, I'm aiming, my goal is to have 35 people because I have 33 seats. So if I, there's always days when, and this goes into scalability too in, in telesales, you have to have a, a good sized team because you're going to have people that just don't show up for work, you know, or are sick. Like you can't control the variables. So I want to have 35, we have 33 seats. But if 35 agents, probably like 28 on a good day, we'll all be there, 29, you know. Everybody shows up. But it's ten ninety nine at the end of the day too, and people sure. can, can do what they want. Um, and and that goes into kind of building a team camaraderie as well to get everybody online and the same goals and the same page, which is huge. Uh, that's so big if you yeah. have a team to have them all aligned on the same goals and holding each other accountable too, because people fear the interpersonal conflict sometimes. But my goal is to get um, to seventy. I want to get to seventy thousand AP a week with uh, with with that, with that many people, I mean, you know, if we get into the the sixties, that sixty, that that'll be that'll be good. But you know, vary PPA will vary week to week with each agent. But yeah, that's strong, buddy. That's huge. Um, thirty five up to thirty five at seventy k a week. That's that's three three point five mil as a team a year. That's that's awesome. That'd be Shoot, that's f- shooting for it, man. We'll we'll get there. We got oh, a bunch yeah. of people in the pipeline. My mistake was to let the gas off recruiting for a little bit, but. It's uh, it's back, and you know, it's just it. Rick, for anybody building a team, recruiting is just like selling. The more leads you get, the more good deals you're gonna get. You're gonna get yeah. some that are like Direct Express, Gerber, ten bucks a month, and then and then you're gonna get some that are like you know fully like you know fully approved day one benefit for four hundred dollar a month. Like that's it's the same thing. It's the, it's the same game, and I love everybody on my team. I'm not saying this in any anywhere uh, like against anybody, but this is just the reality of the, of how of how how it is. You have to treat it like that. Yeah. What's some, uh, what's some, I, I, I love that you shared your culture and your specific goal. And I do believe there's a good chance you're there by the end of the year, man. I mean, the way you hustle, the way you're, you know, hiring, recruiting focused, like, um, it's impressive, buddy. It's impressive to see. What's some, what's some, uh, what's something that you can leave as we wrap up over the next couple of minutes? What's something you can leave? that person out there that's struggling with phone cells or trying to convert to it or was in your shoes years ago? So a year ago, I was in my second bedroom doing this. Wow. And then we built up to the office right now. It's uh, for so someone who's getting into phone sales or struggling, struggling with it now, you, you have to get your presence. It's lead, leads is, is, is cute. You have to have leads, but you have to have your presentation down too. And you have to have your, your, your attitude, right? Um, I would say get a good mentor. That's the biggest, that's good. huge. You have to have a good mentor that you're like in contact with. Yeah. Even if you, you mean you pay that person, if you got to, it's worth your money, you know, because you're, you, they're going to help you sharpen your sword, right? You're going to, it's like, you don't go to, you go to karate class. You're not going to teach yourself out of a book. Like you want to meet the master, you know, you want to meet the guy with the black belt with the red stripe in the middle. He's going to show you everything. So 
like you, you want to get with someone like that because that's going to help you hone your craft so much better. Record your calls, record your calls, listen to them, do play by play, like playback, listen. If you wouldn't buy from you, you got to change your presentation. So if you wouldn't, if you listen and wouldn't buy, most people, a lot of people get scared to listen to themselves on the phone. You have to get comfortable with that because you want to get to where, like, I like listening to myself on the phone now sometimes. Like, that sounds kind of weird, but I, I, I mean, in a sense where it's like, hey, it's just cool. It's just cool because when I have new people that come in, we listen and then we play like, you know, different people's calls and, and we listen and we're like, hey, we can touch on there. So re record your calls, always work on improving your, your presentation, get a mentor, make sure you have solid leads and that you work your leads um, and that you follow up because the average lead is, isn't, you know, not everybody has like a strictly in, like inbound system or anything like that. So, yeah. you know, what, you have to make sure they're worked and so, you got to remember that someone filled out that form because that solved a problem for them. They, people buy things because they love them or they solve a problem. So whatever they tell you, there is a problem that that product solves. So you got you to keep that in mind. And maybe, maybe they're not going to tell you what it is today. Maybe you got to call for the next six weeks. Oh, I know you don't want anything, just following up. And, you know, that, that's really my tips to someone starting at home. JVE, the telesales champ. Dude. <laughs> Man. Hey, if, if they want to follow you on Instagram, how can they do that? Uh, J underscore, I'm not going to pronounce my last name. So it's J underscore V O M. E I G E N J underscore Vom Eigen. Perfect. So, perfect. My, my, that's my IG. Follow me. There we go. You're a beast, bro. Thank you for your time. Congrats. Oh, you're the best, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I'm so excited to see you guys at 8%. Um, and you know, what I really respect about you guys, Cody, is that you were able to just like, and it goes to show the person you are because you have so much going on. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, we're going to think about what to do with like the 8% modifications you're like nope we're doing this we got to do it now and i love that i, that, I thought that was so cool because oh i can't my video I, I thought that was so cool because um it's just it's a big thing and you were able to make like a, a speedboat decision with a cruise ship size event so dude thank you buddy that's huge man well i'm a huge well, fan of sls you. huge fan of jve congrats on the win and thank you for your time and thanks man 3.5 million here we come bro We'll get it. We'll get it. That's just the beginning, man. That's it, dude. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> hey, you're making some big money, right? Your wallet's getting all fat. You're getting excited when you go to the bank. What are you going to do now, right? You need to know some tax strategies. I got the video for you. Click on that with my buddy J.D. Frost, and I'll see you there. An individual tax return has a one in a hundred chance of being pulled for audit. If you make over a million dollars, you have a one in ten chance.